messages picked up by consumers are not guaranteed to be successfully processed. Hence, consumers need a mechanism for processing confirmation. Delivery processing acknowledgements from consumers is referred to as acknowledgements in messaging protocols. In this video, let's learn about the different acknowledgement modes provided by RabbitMQ and see how to work with them when building a .NET application. The concepts that we discuss still applies to other programming languages in case you're not using a .NET programming language. I will be using a RabbitMQ hosted on AWS MQ. However, you can use any of the different mechanisms that RabbitMQ supports to host it. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my RabbitMQ series. Since the messages sent are not guaranteed to reach or successfully process both publishers and consumers, consumers need a mechanism for delivery and processing confirmation. Delivery processing acknowledgements, that is the, from the consumers to RabbitMQ are known as acknowledgements in messaging. In this video, we will be exploring the delivery processing confirmation from the subscribers or the consumers. We will look at the publisher confirms in a different video. Acknowledgements are essential for data safety and it ensures that none of the messages are lost because of network failures, application failures, server failures, etc. Let's see an example of how one such failure can affect in-message loss. So let's switch over to Rider, where I have an existing solution open. This is the exact same solution that I built in my previous video on RabbitMQ introduction. I just renamed it to be Consumer Acknowledgement. It has two projects, one is a send and the receive. So we expand this, there is a send.cs and we also have the receive.cs. Inside the send, we use the connection factory class to create a factory and then we create a connection and we create the model, which is also the channel. And we use this to send the messages. Now this connects to the Amazon MQ instance of RabbitMQ in my case. I have the credential details inside here. Similarly, the receive.cs creates a connection factory and a channel and it uses the eventing basic consumer to connect and process the messages. Whenever a new message is received, it invokes this function. It simply converts it to a string message and it writes it to the console.write line. And that's all this receive.cs does. Now let's assume while processing the received message, there is an exception in processing. Let's see what happens in this case. So let's add in some extra code inside our received function. So let's say if this message contains the word exception, we are going to fail this processing of this message. So let's say a message dot contains exception. Let's write to the console in this case, let's say console dot write line error in processing. Now, ideally this exception could be because of transient exception or some exception in processing the message itself. Now, when building message-based applications, when there are exceptions in these processing, if they are transient, they are ideally expected to be successful if retried at a later time. Now, if these exceptions are domain level exceptions, or application level exceptions which cannot be fixed by retrying, we will still need some kind of an intervention so that it can be processed. So most of the cases we expect these messages to be in an error queue so that somebody can look at it at a later time. We might have additional processing happening here inside code. For now, let's simply write to the console. So let's say console.write line and let's say process message and let's also pass in the message. Now, in this case, let's also throw a new exception whenever an exception occurs. So let's say throw new exception error in processing as the text in the exception. So let's run this application and see how this behaves when an exception occurs inside the consumer. So let's switch over to our console. Let's navigate into the send folder and let's .NET run this application. Let's also open a different tab and let's go into the exact same folder. Let's go into the receive folder and let's .NET run this as well. So we have the send and the receive running. So let's send a message and see if everything's working and we get the received message and the processed message. So let's send a message with exception inside that and it says received message exception and it says error in processing. So we don't get the processed message in this particular case. Now, if I send another message again, this is going to get processed. Now, if I send one more exception, that is going to throw an exception. So say exception in message, and that is again throwing an exception. Now, if I navigate to my Amazon MQ, so inside my brokers, if I go to my test broker, which is a RabbitMQ instance that we set up in the previous video, let's navigate to the web console, 
and let's log in here. So let's give in my username and password and let's go to the queues that we created. So here we have the hello queue and here you can see that there are no messages in this queue. So those two messages which had the exception got lost in this particular case. So this was sent by the RabbitMQ to our consumer. However, the consumer threw an exception and could not process it. However, now that message is completely lost. Now, this is because this message was automatically acknowledged by the consumer. So, let's see what that means. So, if I navigate back into Rider, whenever we set up the basic consume, you can see that we specified auto act to be true. Now, automatic acknowledgement is one of the modes in acknowledgements in RabbitMQ. In automatic acknowledgement mode, a message is considered to be successfully delivered immediately after it is sent. So this means as soon as the message is getting sent to a consumer, it marks it as complete. This mode trades off higher throughput to a reduced safety of delivery and consumer processing. Now this is often useful in scenarios where there is a fire and forget kind of a message. However, this mode should be considered unsafe and is not suitable for all workloads. Now most of the workloads you will be wanting to handle the message successfully, if not, have it in a queue or get reprocessed at a later time. Now, automatic acknowledgement also runs the risk of overloading the consumer because it can keep sending messages to the same consumer even if that has not completed the processing of previous messages. This means the consumer might have more and more messages getting delivered to it, which it is waiting to process. At some point, it will run over its memory and lose all those messages as well. So what is the alternative to automatic acknowledgement? From the name, you would have guessed it is manual acknowledgement. This means the consumer will manually acknowledge the receive and confirmation of processing of the message. Manually sent acknowledgements can be positive or negative. So in the case where a message is successfully processed, it uses the basic.ack method to say that it is acknowledged and successfully processed. However, in case where there is an exception or the message could not be processed successfully, it can use the NACK, which is the not acknowledge, or the reject method that's available on the .NET and also in the RabbitMQ interfaces. Now, before we explore these methods, let's also quickly understand delivery identifiers, which is important to identify which message you're marking as processed. Now, earlier we saw that the message consumers, the messages are delivered across a channel. So anytime a consumer registers to a RabbitMQ and a message is getting delivered to it, it has a delivery tag associated. Now, this delivery tag uniquely identifies the delivery on a channel which means it is scope to the channel. So the same message getting delivered on different channels will have different delivery tags. Now, because delivery tags are scoped to a channel, deliveries must be acknowledged by the same channel that they are getting received on. So you cannot receive a message on one channel and acknowledge it using a different channel. That will throw an exception and also close that channel. So let's see how we can use the manual acknowledgement mode when connecting with RabbitMQ. So let's switch back to Rider. Now, instead of auto act to be true, let's specify this as false, which means we'll need to manually acknowledge this message successfully processed or errored from our consumer code. So inside our received code, so let's say once the processed message is complete and we have successfully processed this message, we can call the channel.ack method, which is the basic ack method, and specify a delivery tag. So in this case, the delivery tag is going to be on the message. So let's say ea dot delivery tag. Now we can also specify if this is for multiple, but in this case there is only one message, so let's say false. Now in the case of an exception, we'll have to say this is not acknowledged or rejected. So after the console.write line, we can specify channel dot basic nsek or we can also use the reject method. Both are almost the same with one difference between them. So if you look at the reject method, basic reject, this takes in a delivery tag and also an option whether to requeue the message or not. Now, in the case of a basic NACK method, this takes in the parameters of the delivery tag and it also supports multiple messages and along with the requeue. So the basic difference between the basic NACK and the reject is that it accepts an additional parameter on multiple. This is what differentiates the basic reject from the basic NSEK. 
It was because the basic reject did not support the multiple scenario that basic NSEK was introduced by RabbitMQ as a protocol extension. So let's navigate back and use the basic reject because in this case, we are not rejecting multiple messages. So let's use basic reject. Let's specify the delivery tag. So in this case, that's going to be the delivery tag. And let's specify the requeue to be true, which means this message will be requeued. Now you can also choose to ignore this message and specify false so that this message will be removed from the queue. So let's run this again and see this in action. So let's just restart the receiver application because that's the only one that we changed. So let's specify .NET run and run the receive again. Now in this case, it's waiting for messages. So let's press one and send a message and it has processed the message. Now, since we are explicitly acknowledging it as received and processed, it will be getting removed from the queue. Now, if I specify a message with exception, so let's specify exception. Now you can see that this message is getting replayed again and again to our consumer. So in this particular case, you can see the message is getting processed multiple times and it is in an ever growing loop. Now, this is because the message contains the word exception and it is getting getting re-delivered to our consumer again and again. So let's stop this execution for now. And if I navigate back to the queue, so let's go to the queue management console and refresh this. And in this case, you can see that this message still exists in the queue. So it is ready to be processed and it is waiting for a consumer to pick this up. So if I navigate into the hello queue and navigate to the get messages, so you can get messages from the queue. Note that even in here, we have the ACK mode to be not a acknowledge message and requeue true so that even if we read the message it is going to put it back into the queue and be available there for further processing now this also has different options inside this which says automatic ack reject reject with requeue true and also reject with requeue false so in this case, let's get the messages and you can see this message has the payload of exception. Now, this is why the consumer is going to go into an infinite loop. Now, ideally in these scenarios, you would be processing it for a couple of times, let's say three or four times and moving this to the error queue as well. Now, we will explore that in a different video where we will be exploring retry mechanisms and how to set up on the maximum limit of the retry. For now, let's come back to our consumer code and let's change this true to be false which means that message will not be requeued again so now if i come back to a consumer and if i run again a new receive so let's say dot net run now this is going to get the message that is existingly in the queue which is the word with exception but it says error in processing however this time you can see that the message is removed so if i navigate back to this queue and let's refresh this and you can see there is only zero messages so if i send it again so let's say a message with exception this is going to be picked up and get removed immediately it is not getting requeued anymore now in our scenario we had the exception thrown after the acknowledgement which means we have handled all the known exceptions inside our applications but what if there is an unhandled exception in our application and we failed to call the basic reject so to simulate that let's comment this line so that we are not going to call the basic reject. Now, this is the case where the consumer forgets to call the reject or there is an unhandled exception inside the consumer or it has completely lost connection with RabbitMQ and is not able to notify RabbitMQ of the rejections or acknowledgements. So let's see what happens in these cases. So if I run this consumer again, so let's stop this and let's run this again. Now let's send a new message. So let's specify exception in this case again. So it's received the message and it says error in processing. However, it was not able to acknowledge it back to the RabbitMQ. Now, if I send further messages, you can see that is getting processed. So if I send again a different message, those are getting processed. Now, if I switch back to the queue and refresh this, you can see there is an unacknowledged message still waiting on that queue. So there is an unact with one, which means it is still waiting for acknowledgement from the consumer. So let's come back to our console and let's send another exception message. Now you can see this consumer has stopped processing this message. So if I send another message, it's stopped processing processing these messages so if i send two three or with the word exception etc this consumer is not picking up these message now if i come back to the queue and refresh this you can see this unact has moved away 
We can also go into the queue and look at all the messages and see what is happening. So if I get the messages, let's get all the messages inside here. You can see we still have the original message which had the word exception, another exception, two, three, etc. All the messages that we send after that. Now, since the RabbitMQ did not hear from one of its consumer on a message, it waited for a configured amount of time, after which it automatically put that message into the ready state. It also closed the connection with that channel, which is why this consumer is not processing those messages anymore. Now, this default timeout is referred to as delivery acknowledgement timeout. Now, this is the timeout that is enforced on a consumer for delivery acknowledgement. Within this time, a consumer has to return back and specify whether it's acknowledged or not acknowledged. Now, this is a protection mechanism that is built into the RabbitMQ so that it can detect stuck consumers or consumers that never acknowledge messages. So, if the consumer does not acknowledge its delivery for more than the timeout value, by default, it is 30 minutes, the channel will be closed. However, we saw that in our case, this happened much before 30 minutes. This is because in my RabbitMQ, if I go back to AWS MQ, I had configured a custom configuration for this. So if I go into the My Test Broker configuration, you can see that I have set up the consumer timeout to be 30 seconds. Now, by default, this is 30 minutes, which is why this value is there. However, I overrode this so that I can show this in this demo. Now, this configuration is applied to our broker as a configuration inside here. So you can see there is a configuration revision and this is set to the revision 2, which is the one that I had modified. Now, if you want to change the configuration, you can go into edit and you can set up a new version inside this. Now, note that once you change this, this does take some time to restart the broker and apply this configuration. Now to process the remaining of the messages inside this queue, I'll have to start a different consumer instance. So if I create a new tab, let's navigate to the same consumer act folder and let's go to the receive folder and let's run again. So let's say raw.net run and this is going to run and pick all the other messages. However, in this case, this is still going to hit an exception and it is going to be in the not acknowledged case. So if I refresh this, you can see here we have three unacknowledged messages. Now, until the RabbitMQ detects that this channel has got fault, it will send these messages to this particular instance. However, when this message after 30 seconds moves to the ready state, it will detect that the consumer is now faulty and will stop sending messages to this consumer as well, which means we will have more messages building up inside our queue. So you can see until that time that it realizes it, it is sending these messages to this consumer. Now it's moved that back into the ready state, which means our consumer would also have gone into the fault state. So now if I send any more messages, so let's say 12, that is not getting picked up by either of these consumers because both of the channels in these consumers are now in a faulted state. Now to prevent these issues from happening, we will have to fix our code and make sure that we handle the exception and acknowledge the messages that is getting processed. So let's update this code. Let's also stop this consumer and let's specify .NET run. Now this is going to run the application and process all the messages. Now since we have acknowledged this time, if I navigate back to the queue, you can see that there are no unact messages. So if you see your unact column building up over time, it means you have buggy consumers. If you're also seeing a buildup in the ready queue, it means you have messages that are not being picked up by any of the consumers and it's likely gone into the faulted state. So in both these scenarios, it's better to check your logs and see if the consumers are running successfully. I hope this helps you to understand the two different acknowledgement modes in RabbitMQ. We learned about the automatic mode and why it is not suitable for majority of the cases of message handling. You also learned how to use the manual acknowledgement and to manually acknowledge knowledge and reject messages. We saw what happens when there are faults in our consumers and how that affects the message processing. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.